I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews with Anthony Georgiades, co-founder and COO of Pastel Network. Anthony, welcome to the show and thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. I'm excited to chat more about Pastel. Likewise, I'm excited to dive into uh, Pastel Network. I would love for you to start us off with just a high level overview and the focus of Pastel Network and then we can dive into the details. Absolutely. So just, you know, in a nutshell, Pastel is, you know, really one of the world's first, you know, fully dedicated purpose built blockchains for the sole use case of NFTs. Um, so obviously, you know, just to kind of take a step back here, uh, we launched Pastel and back in 2018 before NFTs were hitting kind of mainstream media. Um, and the general thesis at the time was, you know, you had some applications like Rare Pepe, um, you had CryptoKitties, which had just obviously started to peak. And there were a lot of, you know, prevalent problems with the underlying use case of NFTs on, you know, more general purpose built blockchains like Ethereum. Um, so our thesis at the time was, you know, to really set out and build a piece of infrastructure and technology from the ground up for the sole use case of the NFT application itself. So we actually started off with um, a Bitcoin like blockchain um, that uses, you know, kind of a ticketing metadata system versus the general smart contracting structure that's prevalent in most um, NFT platforms to date. Um, and then basically, you know, layered in a number of different features. And, you know, altogether what this supports is, you know, a highly robust, um, sophisticated system that's, you know, scalable, um, ensures, you know, very low transaction fees and registration fees, you know, into perpetuity, and then allows for very custom features, such as, you know, a new duplicate detection that, you know, demonstrates the authenticity and rareness of the underlying NFT itself. And so, you know, from there, we've basically, you know, set down a path to, you know, launch and deploy a number of different tools um, and features that different players in the ecosystem can build upon, as well mm -hmm. as, you know, searching for interoperability across um, different, obviously, you know, layer one solutions as well. And then, you know, lastly, you know, launching our own dedicated marketplace that lives directly on top of the Pastel network. Very cool. Thanks for that overview, Anthony. And yeah, it's uh, compared 2018 compared to now, uh, it's exploded, yeah. and I think having that yeah. technology in place uh, is good, really going to help. It seems that you know before the majority of NFTs being developed on Ethereum, there were quite a few problems, and it still seems that there are a few in the industry. Um, and I'm guessing that you really pinpointed those down as you continue to develop out the technology. Um, can you talk about from an artist or a creator's perspective, they're coming to mint their first NFTs and, and they see all of these different marketplaces and different blockchains. Uh, and what would you say to them for, you know, what's the main competitive advantages of minting and utilizing NFTs on Pastel Network? <clears throat> Absolutely. You know, I think first and foremost, right, um, you know, if you're leveraging kind of the Pastel marketplace, again, that lives on the Pastel Network, you know, we've designed it from basically the you know, perspective of the underlying user itself. You know, a lot of applications on the market were obviously built you know, by crypto users for crypto users, but don't necessarily tailor towards you know, traditional digital artists or creators, generally speaking. So for us, having a very nice you know, user interface and experience that kind of abstracts away some of the um, you know, wild west aspects of the crypto world was very critical for us. I'm just making it super seamless, super intuitive and simple. And then in terms of kind of the actual core features itself, you know, first and foremost, right, a lot of times, you know, you're minting an NFT on um, a dedicated, you know, let's say an, an Ethereum platform per se, right? Um, I have to get in line in terms of the underlying traffic and usage of, you know, hundreds of different applications or even just, you know, other minting, you know, creators of NFTs, right? That lends itself to very high transaction fees, scalability constraints and whatnot. On the Pastel platform, you know, you're insured always, you know, very negligible low transaction fees. We've established a very um, kind of robust system that dynamically changes the registration fee in terms of, you know, PSL during periods of you know, high traffic or network difficulty, which ensures that, you know, from a creator's perspective, what that means, you're always going to pay, you know, under 50 cents for anything that you mint. A couple mm -hmm. other things, you know, mentioned too, you know, I think what's become you know, very critical and important um, from a creator's perspective is this concept of, you know, where is my actual asset, you know, or art being, you know, whatever it might be, being stored, right? <clears throat> We've seen obviously some of the rug pull scams and things like that, you know. When I acquire a traditional, you know, smart contract based NFT, 
I basically you know have the underlying token ID and you know potentially a hyperlink to you know where the actual data is stored, and that can be on a kind of central web server um, such as a you know Google Cloud server or you know some sort of AWS EC2 instance, right? I don't necessarily own the actual data itself as much as I actually do you know the nifty per, you know perspective of it. You know, there's also this a lot of players that are looking to solve upon this through IPFS pinning and things of the nature, but the issue with that is you also now rely on external dependencies and you know different node holders that you know need to basically ma maintain those IPFS nodes. Um, so for us, what was really important was to actually build an internal storage solution. So anytime basically an NFT is uploaded onto the platform, we use a sophisticated fountain block algorithm that takes the file and you can think about it as like chopping it up into you know thousands of different little blocks and then it copies those blocks and then distributes them using an algorithm called Kademlia over every single node on the network. So the actual intrinsic storage of the you know data is internally on the blockchain itself. Very cool. I like that. Um, and <laughs> you you mentioned there uh, fifty cents. That's pretty good for you know having uh, democratized access to create NFTs, and you're not paying uh, a bunch of you know of unknown amount depending on the network uh, and how many things are going on, on on Ethereum specifically. But it also seems that a lot of these uh, networks are utilizing layer two solutions to remove those costs uh, and therefore, you know, potentially having under 50 cents as well. Um, so I guess using Pastel, is it similar to when creators are utilizing layer two networks or is it is it better and different? Absolutely, layer two networks in the sense of basically layer one solutions to help kind of ensure you know lower fees per se. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I look, it's it's definitely exciting to see a lot of the solutions that have come into the market today, right? And I think you know that's just kind of one aspect of it as well. But you know, from our perspective, you know, you start to layer in a lot of these different kind of you know either kind of side chains or you know relayer solutions to help kind of bandage some of the intrinsic problems. Um, you know, in our system itself, you know, yeah, you might. I, you don't necessarily see the trade-off, right? I might necessarily use a layer two network to ensure lower transaction fees, but that might mean that I'm waiting, you know, X blocks before my NFT is minted, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, with some of that trade-off comes, you know, other intrinsic issues itself, if that makes sense. Definitely. But, definitely. you know, I definitely, it's definitely encouraging to see, you know, all the, you know, mind share and development power in this space that's, you know, dedicating time and resources to solving upon a lot of these solutions. Definitely. And speaking of development, uh, I was looking into you know, the development ecosystem for Pastel Network and the NFT DAP uh, that you know you've really encouraged developers to be able to develop easily on Pastel. Maybe you can talk about the development ecosystem and the NFT DAP. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I c cut off the last part. What was the last part of the question? Uh, the NFT DAP and and just the development ecosystem altogether. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in terms of Pastel specifically, what's exciting is, you know, and as I mentioned, um, we've been working the last three years on a number of these underlying features, right? So, for example, our robust duplicate detection system can serve and stand like on an isolated basis, right? So you can imagine somebody that's running a layer two marketplace on top of an Ethereum or Solana can basically, you know, upon minting an NFT, a simple, you know, RPC call or, you know, a simple kind of um, connection to Pastel enables them to leverage just one of our tools, like for example, the new duplicate detection system. And you know, you've now basically you know seen um, a lot of integration in terms of you know actual you know third-party developers you know building on top of Pastel in interesting ways. Um, so from our perspective, it's all about you know how can we be as basically you know open as possible, right? Mm -hmm. We you know, built a lot of this awesome you know really cool stuff, and you know what can we do best to basically you know, leverage our resources and, and kind of open it up to the broader community. And so from our perspective, you know, what the future looks like is, you know, you have obviously a number of different um, NFT applications, you know, that coexist in the world, right? And, you know, potentially certain marketplaces, you know, leverage, you know, the duplicate detection system of Pastel. Maybe some leverage the actual, you know, storage solutions that we have offered. And maybe you have actual layer two marketplaces that transition directly on top of you know, the core underlying layer one infrastructure that we've built out. Uh, but at the end of the day, what's exciting is, you know, we have, you know, basically at this point, we've had hundreds of, hundreds of developers contribute to 
our overall code base. And you know, we have you know 50 plus that are working you know actively on a daily basis, um, and basically just contributing code from a core perspective with again you know several hundred others that have you know basically you know maintained active repositories um, in our you know in our GitHub itself. So mm -hmm. I think the future is very exciting, and I think as we you know continue to go to market and get more and more players and partners you know working with us and building upon us. Um, it'll just obviously have you know significant network effects of development mindshare on top of us, which will you know then lend itself to you know more and more partners building with us. I completely agree, and I do think that uh, the duplicate protection is is really interesting. And I'm curious if you have more information surrounding you know how big of a problem is duplicate protection, and when you and your team set out building this DAP, what was the main goal? Is it to protect creators to check? if somebody else is duplicating their NFTs, or is it to stop in the process if somebody else is trying to mint something and, and it's already been minted? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, it's it's a bit of both, right? You know, the, the biggest issue that's really been prevalent in the digital art space for forever is really, you know, how do I know that what I'm actually buying is, you know, truly rare and authentic? And, you know, how easy is it to basically just, you know, rip off something from, um, you know the internet and basically copy it. If I take a, if I take a, you know, let's say that Ashton decides to mint an NFT, I take that same NFT, I change one little pixel, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same data, but it's going to demonstrate a different perceptual hash, right? So it appears that it's you know different. So our whole objective was, how can we really create a system that, from <clears throat> a viewer's basically naked eye, looks, feels, you know, is the same effectively. An NFT that's basically cropped, flipped, stretched, you know, the contour component of it, a Mona Lisa with a mustache, right? Something that's not necessarily, you know, truly rare, right? Um, you know, but is obviously, you know, a, a unique perceptual hash. Mm -hmm. um, but so that whole kind of general idea, you know, started off several years ago and um, our CEO basically spent, you know, a long time trying to basically solve upon this research problem. And I, I kind of view it as, well, I would say, probably the biggest differentiating factor of the system itself, um, the fact that we've been able to actually achieve this, you know, near duplicate detection component. And so you can think about it, you know, as if I'm an artist and I admit an NFT and I know it's purely mine, I'll get assigned kind of a, a level of rareness. And from, you know, your perspective as a user, it's anything from zero to 100%, you know, 100% meaning, you know, this is extremely rare versus, you know, zero percent, um, you know, this is, you know, not rare whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And just for a quick rundown of how we do this, um, we basically use, you know, a, a number of different deep learning models to transform each actual NFT into a, you know, 10, you can think about like a 10,000 plus vector fingerprint. Um, and then we basically use sophisticated statistical techniques to assess the correlation of that fingerprint against every single NFT on Pastel, as well as, you know, collaborative platforms, and then as well as doing, you know, an effective reverse image search on the network. Um, so we're basically, you know, comparing this fingerprint to any other fingerprint that you know the world has effectively seen. Um, so it's a pretty powerful system, and you know you can think about it like this, right? If I'm buying a CryptoPunk, um, and you know I'm, I'm basically a you know a, a new novel user, um, and it's you know been altered slightly, I don't necessarily care you know how authentic or, or rare it is, but you know maybe that means I'm not necessarily w willing to pay a high premium. Mm -hmm. And if I'm a you know highly sophisticated collector, you know, maybe every piece that I want to acquire, I want it to be you know truly rare, truly authentic. Uh, I guess the last thing I'll, I'll touch on here is, you know, again, the important aspect of this is to really protect both, you know, the user and creator from, you know, outright scam, um, copyright infringement, et cetera. Um, but at the end of the day, too, you know, we've built in a level of kind of, you know, ticketing um, submissions where, you know, it helps ensure that obviously, you know, the user is protected in the case of, you know, false positives or false negatives and things of the nature. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for elaborating on that, Anthony. I, I really appreciate that. And I'm also curious about, you know, in the NFT space, there's been a lot of discussion and potential controversy around the environmental impacts and that minting NFTs are bad. I'm curious on your perspective on that. Is that a real issue? And, and if it is, is your team doing something to mitigate that? I mean, look, there's there's been obviously, you know, a lot of headlines in the news recently just with respect to the environmental impact of you know, just the, the broader blockchain ecosystem. Obviously, you know, the debate over proof of work proof versus proof of stake, um, the extraneous 
you know, computational resources that may or may not be needed um, definitely have kind of a detrimental detrimental impact on society itself. Um, there's obviously you know certain trade-offs as well with a proof of stake versus you know proof of work system. You know the the latter being obviously a lot more you know battle tested. Um, I, I would say though you know for the most part what is exciting is I think that for the first time in the industry's history we've seen so much work going on into basically combating a lot of this you know ESG concern which I think is super super you know powerful and um, from my perspective you know very optimistic right in terms of you know where things are going in the future in terms of pastel specifically you know we've been you know working actively with a number of those different groups but we've also layered in um, a kind of unique aspect of the system where we basically take a component um, of every registration fee and actually send it to a nonprofit that plants trees to help basically um, you know provide some car you know some carbon offsetting so you know I, I definitely think there's a lot of creative ways to um, you know, help in terms of just you know purely carbon offsets um, this is kind of you know one of the ways we've thought about it um, but it is exciting to see you know how much work is going into you know, help find more sustainable long-term solutions mm-hmm Great. That's good to know. And it's always nice to hear when there's a company planting trees as well. So thanks for, thanks for that. Um, now moving forward, you already have all this intricate technology, uh, with pastel. I'm guessing people are going and minting NFTs very often. What are the next steps for your team in terms of developments and releases and growing the platform, say in the next uh, six months? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, it's pretty exciting, right? We're at, we're at an inflection point where, you know, we have our, our full uh, mainnet is you know, fully functional and live in terms of the actual layer one app, you know, component itself. Um, in the coming weeks, we're going to be launching our, you know, dedicated layer two marketplace directly on top of Pastel. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, there'll be a lot of, you know, kind of user acquisition strategy in place in terms of actually going out to the market, um, acquiring initial users. And I think one aspect of what we're going to really focus on is, you know, non-crypto native users, you know, ones that maybe haven't even actually explored the NFT environment per se yet because they've either you know, not had the resources to do so or have basically just been kind of, you know, scared to, to make that jump into the crypto space. So, you know, that's one aspect of, you know, what we're really excited about on, on the roadmap. Um, the second is just to continue to build out developer documentation in terms of, you know, all of these amazing kind of tools that we have, you know, built out in our broader ecosystem. Um, and then, you know, obviously from that perspective, procuring more and more partners to work with us, leverage our tools, you know, build upon us. Um, I wouldn't say that we have <laughs> any competitor, right? I view everyone as a collaborator, right? It's still very early innings. Everything that we do is, you know, for basically, you know, the progress of just the broader ecosystem, right? And contributing to that growth. Um, so working with a number of these different collaborators on, you know, kind of a daily basis and, um, you know, obviously contributing to that, that you know, vision and goal. And so, yeah, I think those, you know, really are kind of the two main things we're focused on. Um, obviously, a number of, you know, underlying kind of specific features. If you go to pastel.wiki, you can see our full roadmap in terms of, you know, what we have laid out over the coming months and, you know, for every single release. Great. I think that's a great perspective to have as we are very early days and there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, so thank you for that, Anthony. For the viewers that are looking to learn more about Pastel Network in general and to start minting NFTs and getting involved and, and looking for the release for this marketplace, what's the best way for them to get involved and join the community? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to our website, you know, pastel.network, you know, basically we have a number of you know different resources on the website directly. You can go to the About Us page, you know, read the overview. And I think, you know, obviously go to the wiki as well for a little bit more of a, a technical overview on the platform. Um, and then, you know, once you're on the site, we have links to, you know, our Telegram, um, our Twitter, our Instagram accounts. And, you know, if you join any of those different community channels, you know, we're constantly posting, you know, different updates and different news on the platform in, in terms of, you know, our progress and next steps. Great. Thanks, Anthony. I will leave those links in the description box below as well. All the best with Pastel Network moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, Ashton. Appreciate it.